If I could ask everyone to go ahead and take their seats. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you who came out this evening. Craig Rice, Montgomery County Council Member representing District 2, and I'm Chair of the Education Committee. And tonight's meeting was one in which we wanted to talk to folks about our CIP, which is our Capital Improvements Program budget. Uh, it really is one where it's the bricks and mortar uh, of Montgomery County government. Thank you, Council Member, for coming out tonight. So it's everything from building roads to libraries to police stations. Montgomery Village Avenue, we're at Lakeshore Drive. We've been asking for many years to just improve the intersection there. The concerns that we heard from our CIP meeting were pretty much about infrastructure maintaining pace with the growth that we see here in Montgomery County. Some of the issues we heard are, are around some of our schools like Poolsville High School. And it really is an interesting and challenging one for us because Poolsville High School isn't uh, facing a capacity issue, but they do have an aged infrastructure that still doesn't meet the needs of a 21st century high school. There's a couple of ADA, non-ADA compliant entrances. We have water pipes leaking. We have a lot of situation. Of course, everyone uh, certainly wants to see these things happen. They've been waiting for a very long time. Because 20, 30, or 40 years is unacceptable for Poolsville High School. When it comes to ensuring that we're addressing those particular issues and want to see them happen sooner rather than later. But it's one of those where I've given great thought to this, and um, I, I really think that uh, similar to what we did with our libraries, uh, to where we said that we were going to stop doing RevX projects for our libraries, which is revitalization expansion, basically tear it down and build a new one, um, but actually doing some stuff inside of the building to really just help to modernize it. Um, it, it and, and that would create some additional spaces and help with ADA compliance and those kinds of things. And it's a lot cheaper, might be the way to go. Uh, when it comes to some of these projects to at least get us where we need to be. Hi, I'm Carmen Vasquez and I'm a teacher at South Lake um, Elementary School in Gaithersburg. So on behalf of South Lake, we would like to thank you for continually supporting us. Um, so we heard from our South Lake community about some of the concerns around security for uh, portable classrooms there. And there are many concerns that come with these portables that are outside. Um, instructional time is being lost. Uh, with some of the issues they're facing with gangs and with some of our uh, homeless population. Um, we currently have um, homeless people living under the portables. Um, so there's just, uh, you know, we're looking for a temporary solution to this temporary problem that we have right now because of the portables. <laughs> so how can we work with you to ensure that South Lake is a priority in the CIP? And it brings about a much larger question that we have about portables throughout Montgomery County. It really is one of those where we need to consider if continuing to use the types of portables that we're using uh, to address some of the capacity issues is the best way for us uh, to really handle these particular issues. You know, there are different varied kinds of portables that we have as well uh, that provide a little bit more safety and security than some of the standard ones. And so in this sort of situation, maybe something like that would alleviate uh, some of the concerns that we have, but we need to take a look at all of those options. But Whether it's modular classrooms, understanding that these are uh, buildings that will be there for quite a while, uh, that are more conducive to a better learning environment, also are safer, uh, and also are better from a health perspective for our students. And so we really need to just uh, rethink uh, how it is that we're addressing capacity issues and safety issues uh, throughout the school system. And I think we've already started some of that under the leadership of uh, our superintendent, Jack Smith, and the Board of Education. Thank you very much. But um, and everything that uh, Mr. Rice said is absolutely spot on. Not everything can be addressed immediately because, as Mr. Rice said, funding is limited. But, but in terms that we take safety and security extremely seriously. Yep. And so the things that were pointed out in terms of people sleeping under the portables and things like that, we are going to be looking at and hopefully we'll address sooner rather than later. So. But I do think that we need to accelerate that sort of creative thinking. You know, the Clarksburg region is one in which we've promoted growth but haven't necessarily provided the infrastructure that was there uh, to support it. Clarksburg Town Center plan, master plan, has been there at least to my knowledge for the last 25 years or more. And the question is, what's the status of that? I've been there for 10 years and I'm still looking at that pile of dirt that is our town center. And we are dying 
dying. There's not enough roads. There's no plan currently. And now that Clarksburg has 20, approaching 25,000 residents, uh, we still don't have a library. We're still dealing with a temporary uh, fire station and uh, now have a location that's picked out for a permanent fire station. We really need to get on track with the CIP to build the permanent fire station in Clarksburg. Those are the basics which a lot of our community uh, residents in Clarksburg expect to have now. Uh, those basics would be recreation centers, uh, libraries. Uh, you know, this isn't some little podunk town. Uh, so we're working with a developer. Um, you know, we just worked on Stringtown Road and got that open to increase connectivity. The uh, synergy that the county and the developer have been able to uh, glean together to be able to get some stuff done. So I can assure you it is a top priority. It's really important for folks to come out to these meetings to make sure that their voice is heard. I need clarification. A couple of people recently, the last few days, said to me that they heard M83 was taken out of the master plan. Um, as far as answering your question, yes, M83 is indeed still in the master plan. And for them to understand that it's not falling on deaf ears, I'm going to make sure that tonight I forward all of these uh, issues to my colleagues so that they're aware. Uh, we take all of the information that we're getting uh, from our residents. Any plans for a after school or youth center that could be built in that area? I and try and best incorporate that in what it is that we do each and every day, whether it's ideas for potential legislation, whether it's ideas on how to better serve our residents when it comes to policies and procedures. Uh, those are all things that we take very seriously. Are extremely important to get um, people to access transit. I am a novice to all of this. Uh, we're reaching out because we want to hear from us. Every kid in Montgomery County deserves to feel safe. Uh, we will have separate meetings and set those up with you to talk about particular issues that you care about. To meet you and introduce myself, I'm Christina. I'm one of the cluster reps for Ronald McNair. Oh, okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. So How are things gonna, at McNair? They're good. Good. They're good. Um, I was just telling them this is also like new for me, like yeah. the school politics, community politics. Oh, but, yeah. I, but I love it. Like, I too much. I and now you've gotten anything. a chance to talk to Laura, to so it's anything. good. I just joined the PTA just a few weeks ago. Um, and then in a matter of like a week or two, I became some sort of cluster representative. And then now I'm here learning about all this stuff, all about the community. So the delegate meeting, the one, once, a month. once a month. They told me that there was a meeting once a month. I feel like I met some really great people tonight, get the word out there, represent our school. It's very strange because I never did before. I was never interested in, any, in politics on any level whatsoever and then I, it's very overwhelming that's why I sat in the back because I said I don't I don't even want to say anything because I don't want to embarrass myself but yeah it was great had a great time just kind of listening and hearing what everybody had to say and seeing so many people together and like all for their community and all for the kids. This is really where the greatest ideas come from. They come from community collaborating with government to figure out how best to serve our greater community as a whole. Yeah yeah.